Okay, let's get started. Step one, print your favorite photograph like I did. This is a photo from uh, my recent wedding to my lovely now husband Pete. He's adorable. And I've just printed this on my inkjet printer on regular laser paper, actually copy paper, um, just even on a recycle page. So I try not to waste too much paper if I can. Now, I just want you to start tearing the edges of um, your paper here to go around the photograph. Um, the aim is to have some torn edges so the end result will look like it's been um, around for a while. It'll have that sort of oldy kind of feel to it. I'm removing some of the bottom part of my photograph because I felt that there was too much of the ground showing of the floor there and I didn't want too much of that to be the focus. The couple, the couple is the main focus here, so just guide the paper along as you're tearing off your edges and just do that smoothly um, because it's easy just to go a bit too nuts and rip off too much of it, so just take it easy. And try to do reasonably straight lines if you have a photograph similar to mine anyway. Right. We've got our photo all um, cut out. Now we want to glue it to our substrate. Um, I'm using my moleskin um, journal here, but you can use a canvas or whatever. And we're going to use gel medium to glue this paper down. Now um, gel medium is quite thick. It's a bit like a gooey kind of paste and it's just apply with a, a damp brush and you just need to spread it all over your page or wherever your image is going to go or you could also spread it directly onto the back of our photograph and then glue it down well, whatever works best for you but i'm just putting it all over my page and um, any spots that you may miss may result in air bubbles so try to cover it as much as you can without missing any gaps Press it down firmly and into position and try to smooth out any air bubbles you have underneath. Press it down firmly and then just spread more gel medium all over the photograph, especially on the edges, to make sure that it will never peel off and it also gives it protection for whatever we're going to do next. Um, at this stage I decided to add another brand of gel medium from Faber-Castell only because the previous brand from Derivan was a little bit too glossy for my liking so this is just an optional step. I'm just going to spread it all over um, the paper including all the edges that way I'll have a nice smooth surface where I can add my acrylic paints and other media on top without worrying about anything um, you know not not adhering properly. Make sure you dry this um, page completely. Use your craft gun, your uh, hair dryer, whatever you've got that works and helps um, speed things up. Life is short after all. And grab some acrylic painting colors that you like. I've chosen um, colors that go well together. Uh, a lime green, a bit of a sky blue, and a sort of cobalt um, blue, a sort of a greeny turquoise colour. I'm just going to apply a little bit of paint on my finger, but you can also just put it on your palette and dip your finger in there. Or use a brush if you want, but I just, you know, it's more fun to do with fingers sometimes. It's a bit childish, why not? So just spread it onto your page here or your canvas and go a little bit over the edges of um, the photograph so it sort of merges in into the background. So spread your colors around a little bit. Move on to your next color and just try to fill um, this entire surface with your colors but in little patches. Now, after putting my three colors, I decided that I wanted a fourth. So I'm choosing some lilac that will also go well with those um, existing colors. And I'm sort of blending in whatever is still wet. If the paint's already dry, don't worry, we're gonna smooth out all of this. 
with a little bit of white paint next. So now that my page is covered pretty much in color, I'm going to use some white just to make it a little bit softer in, in spots and I'm going to add it also onto the edges of the photograph. It sort of blends everything together and to smooth it out. It makes a bit of a cloudy, sort of uh, moody and romantic effect. It's so much fun with fingers, don't you think? No brush is required for this step. So just have fun with it and take your time. If this is a bit you don't like, just dry it off and then put it a bit more on top. There's no right or wrong way to do this. As long as your colors go reasonably well together, don't contrast too much, um, this will work with any colors you like. Always dry that off before moving on to the next step. And now we're going to do some stamping. This one I've chosen is really lovely. I just love that filigree style. It's kind of romantic and it's subtle at the same time. So just pick roughly a spot where you think you're going to start and will look good. Peel it off. This is a cling stamp so it's quite easy to use. You just peel it off the backing sheet, um, put it on um, your cling um, support and just sticks by itself. And I'm going to use an ink pad called Stays On, which is a permanent ink, and that will dry almost straight away. It will not smudge later on, which is great. Just press it firmly onto your stamp. So all the lines are covered, or mostly covered. It doesn't have to be perfect. And choose your first spot. I like to overlap it a little bit over the edges of photograph and the page, so it goes off the page a little bit, so it's not too neat. Press it down quite firmly and don't worry if it's not perfect when you peel it off. It's alright, we just remember we're not going for perfection, we just want uh, a bit of an older style, a bit of a patchy kind of worn feeling. So if it sticks a little bit, just peel it off really gently. Keep doing that to a few areas of your page. I'm just going to put mine a little bit all the way around. And after that, I'm going to choose another stamp for extra texture. And this one's got music notes on it, so it kind of reminds me of, you know, dancing at the wedding and um, they're just romantic. And Galaxy Gold is a beautiful, slightly shiny gold color that will look lovely on my page here. So just do the same with uh, any stamp that you think will go well with your theme. You can't really see the gold here too much because it's quite subtle, but it, it will get picked up by the light um, when it's you know when you move the page around a little bit. So it's quite pretty. And don't be afraid to go over the photograph a little bit. You just want everything to sort of come together. Now, baby wipes are a godsend and they're great for cleaning your fingers as well as extra ink on your stamps. So a little quick clean and I try to be good, you know, I just move all my stuff out of the way if I can, but somehow all my art supplies keep taking over. So I, I try to move things out of the way, at least for you guys, out of the camera field. <laughs> I hope you're not like me, getting invaded by all these art supplies. Okay, now here's what we've got at the moment. A little bit of a close-up. Can't see those music notes too much, a little bit in the top corner here. But anyway, it gives you an idea of what's happening up close so far. Beautiful. Let's have a go at putting some watercolor effect on the dress. And I'm using wax crayons um, called Neo Color 2. They are uh, water soluble, but you can also use um, any kind of watercolor that works. The goal is to um, have that old, um, older kind of style, you know, when they used to um, add color to all photographs, which were in black and white originally. So there are two ways you can do this. You can apply the crayon directly onto the paper and then use either a water brush like this 
or a paint brush dipped in water same result really and once the crayon is on there you can just um, spread it around with the water from your brush and then the second option is just to I'll show you in a second hang on I'm getting ahead of myself here I'm putting a little bit of purple on my dress and you're probably wondering why thinking what is this crazy person doing here you go so the second option is to um, put some water directly on the crayon and then spread that onto the paper so yes my dress was very colorful well I'm an artist who says you have to wear white at your wedding so exactly I wore a dress with my favorite colors turquoise purple, magenta and lime green. Yay for me! <laughs> so I'm just adding those colors back onto the dress or at least a hint of those colors because they're a lot brighter than that but I'm trying to keep that um, sort of old style, old effect um, on here. So just keep doing the same on your photograph with the colors that you like. And so I'm continuing with my magenta here and then a little bit of lime green later on while the paint is still wet you can remove it with your finger or even a, a baby wipe if it's just going over a spot you didn't want to uh, to paint and once you've added um, your first layer of color we're just going to dry that off if you want your colors to be more intense then let's do a second layer of color in exactly the same way. So the more layers you add this way, the more the colors will be um, intensified and vibrant. So I'm just doing this a little bit at a time. It's um, better to, to go slowly than just put too much and regret it later on. So I'm just drying that off again. And to be honest, the colors are pretty cool right now but they could do with a little bit more pop so I'm going to use another one of my favorite tool and um, tool sorry and this is um, in the form of pan pastels so they're just a dry uh, pastel pigment that is super easy to use all you need is um, a little latex sponge brush which is uh, basically an, one of those little brushes you use for applying eyeshadow and you're going to brush that very gently on the pastel and apply it directly onto your paper so remember the watercolor effect we have underneath is dry so we don't make a mess while we add this dry pigment on top but thanks to those pastels the colors are going to be a little bit more vibrant than before so I'm just using exactly the same colors I had before and applying them exactly in the same spot if you find you make a mistake and you put some of that pastel a bit too much over a spot you didn't mean to you can just use a, an eraser and simply you know rub it off it's that simple it's not foolproof obviously so still Pay attention to what you're doing and just go slowly, but it does help to have that option. As you can see, I'm sort of um, putting the colors all the way to the edges as well, so they sort of merge into the background in the bottom right corner here. You wouldn't even notice the edge of the paper anymore if you didn't know that is okay i'm erasing a few mistakes here and the color is a bit more vibrant now so i'm much happier now you're working with dry pigments which will smudge if you um, put anything over so use a workable fixative just a light spray over the page and probably best to do this outside usually but you know I'm used to fumes and just for you guys I'll I'll take it in you know 
<laughs> so they dry really quickly but just to be cautious I, I like to just dry it off anyway just to be safe now nothing will move underneath this is what we are at now starting to build up I'm quite happy so far and as you know I love metallic so some gold some acrylic gold paint would be lovely on this page just to add a little bit of I don't know richness to it and a bit of shine so I'm gonna do the same as before when I apply my colors a bit of um, paint on my finger and I just rub it in just very gently so I don't want anything too strong I just want subtle highlights so you can do the same um, in silver if you prefer or any other kind of metallics or even just a color a plain color it doesn't have to be metallic but I do love them and I, I just can't help using them so I'm going to apply them on the edge of my photograph all the edges just make stand out make them stand out a little bit and I'm going to put some here and there on the page so everything's um, uniform a bit on the edges of the actual pages of the journal And also a little bit on my dress as highlights. A bit on the, the actual photo itself. And a little bit on my hair because I have blonde hair. So that helps a little bit hinting at that. And just, you know, put a little bit everywhere also on the photo, just so it all comes together. You don't want any of the elements to sort of stand out by themselves. We don't want, we want the whole thing to um, be one piece of artwork, if that makes sense. So it looks like I'm adding a lot, but it's actually very subtle. Baby wipes, great for cleaning fingers. Okay, this is where we're at now. I hope you can see that gold shimmer here on the page. It's looking quite lovely and kind of a bit oldy kind of style. I'm happy where this is going. I hope your project is coming along um, quite nicely as well. Now, a little bit more texture using a stencil and an ink pad in Moonlight White, which is a, a pearlescent kind of white effect. Well, this will add a nice shimmer um, to my page, but um, it, it's going to be still subtle because it's, it's white, so it won't stand out too much from everything else. So just, I'm using a little um, sponge dabber for ink here at the end of my finger which works quite nicely to go into little corners and the little uh, nooks and crannies of this um, stencil. Just checking if it's looking good. Happy with that. Nice effect actually. So I'm going to apply it in a few corners of the page, but I'm going to make sure that I also go over the photo. So the, again, just to um, bring the photograph in the background together. So if you're doing something similar, hold your stencil really firm in place and make sure you dab um, in your vertical motion. Don't rub the, the ink into your paper left to right or in circles because that will move your stencil and it might smudge things everywhere. Could be a cool effect, you never know, but in this case I'm just going slowly with what I'm doing. Funky. Okay, I'm going to add it to the other corners of the page and um, repeat the same process. Just go slowly. And any kind of stencil will work in this case. 
just anything that you can apply in a corner and just overlap it on the edges of your page so it doesn't look like it's just standing out in the foreground. Now I love all those um, vibrant colors, but just to stay in keeping with the style of the page, which is a, a older kind of feel um, photograph, I want to tone down some of those colors. And I'm doing this by applying some light brown pan pastel, just really lightly over the edges um, with the soft tool, which comes with most pan pastels and I'm just applying it gently all the way around and toning down some of those colors. I don't want to lose all of them. I still want a bit of pop, but um, not too much. So I think this is a good way to, to give that old style feel to my page. Could you also use a black, but um, I feel it would be a little too strong in this case. So I'm keeping the brown for now. And I'm going to apply it a little bit over the photograph as well, just so everything's um, tying in together. And that's helping me tone down some of those details in the background of the photograph. So our eyes are just focused on the couple mostly and nothing else that distracts from them too much. So just go over lightly your photograph and do the same on any detail you don't want to um, stand out too much. And make sure you go over the edges of the torn paper as well, just to blend everything together. forget to add a layer of fixative to make sure that that pen pastel doesn't move. And I'm going to quickly dry it as well before I move on to the next step. Now finally, I'm using a black gelato, which um, I'm trying to show you here, but it's not focusing that well. But anyway, you just have to trust me. It's just a regular black color. And this um, gelato stick is going to help me add an extra element to my design. And that's going to be the final one. I'm just going to brush it lightly all over the edges of my moleskin journal and just simply use your finger to blend it. It's very smooth. It feels like a, um, a chapstick or a lipstick almost. And it's going to help me give my project a, a sort of soft, um, oldy, kind of grungy edge without distracting too much from the main focus which is a photograph. So just keep doing this all the way around. And this will create a nice um, border, a nice frame around the whole photograph. But a soft edge at the same time. See how everything's popping now? I really love that. And I do this on most of my pages actually. Now I'm just applying the pastel, I'm sorry, the gelato stick straight on my finger just to add a few bits of black here and there, but very, very subtle. And that helps also tone down some of those white areas that are a little bit too white. And 
there you have it. This is the final project, so I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. I hope you like the effect and then you can apply it on to your own photos and get a really cool effect like this that you wouldn't get just by creating a regular painting with acrylics. I hope you will send me photos of the projects that you've created following this tutorial along. And I really thank you for watching. I hope I'll see you in another um, tutorial very soon. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye guys.